um, as, firstly, as part of our Harlow is 70 years of age um, heritage project, asking lots of people why they came to Harlow, take, taking yourself back, why did you come to Harlow? And when did you come and why did you come? Well, it's, a, um, it's, it's quite a, an amazing story, really, um, which you'll hear in my performance. To cut a long story short, when I was a, a kid, um, well, my dad died when I was 10, and um, I won a scholarship to a really horrible um, charity boarding school in West Sussex. Um, and uh, I was really, really unhappy there. I was really unhappy there. And um, when I was 14, my, um, my mum remarried and I didn't get with my stepfather at all. Uh, I made a good friend at school called Tony Poulter. And um, he invited me to stay with his family because yeah, I wasn't getting on with, with my stepfather. And I basically almost became a fixture in Royden from the age of about 15 to about 17. Um, you know, many of the holidays I'd spend quite a lot of the time here uh, in Royden. So being the kind of person I am, I wandered into Harlow. And to, I can't remember exactly how or when, but in about 1975, hanging around somewhere, um, drinking probably, oh no, I was, I was eligible, I was a, sort of of drinking age by then, but I met Richard Holgarth. Richard Holgarth is the first person I met in Harlow, and it would have been about 75, because I was just starting at the University of Kent, and I put Pete and the Meat and the Boys, his first band, um, well, I don't, maybe it wasn't his first band, but anyway, I put Pete and the Meat and the Boys on at the University of Kent at one of my Rock Against Racism gigs, because I was organising that there, in 70, it would have been 76. Um, and to cut a long story short again, since when I left, when I finished university, I still didn't get on with my stepfather. Um, and I, and I, was, I knew I was going to go to Belgium because there was a chance to set up Rock Against Racism in Brussels. And um, I knew I was going to go there and I needed some money to basically get, keep myself going when I was out there because I was going to be playing violin in the street to, to earn a living. So I wanted some quick money. And Richard told me there was, there was uh, seasonal jobs going at Gilby's on, in the old Pinnacles. So I spent two months of, this would have been... Uh, Christmas, uh, October to December 1978, I spent two months uh, working nights for 12 hours shoving booze around on the conveyor belts and obviously accidentally dropping them off sometimes as we know and, uh, and then putting them behind the back and then we all got absolutely pissed and uh, anyway, um, so yeah, so then I went off to Belgium, I came back in about October, September, the job was still available for the following year, seasonal job, I came back up um, and I mean, the first time I was living in Wedhay, I was sharing a flat with Chris, Chris Roskell, Chris Roskell and Jenny Levac. The second time I came back, by that time I'd met Steve and the new Tony Erotics, and he said, well, I've just got my flat, do you, you, you fancy crashing at my, at my place while you're doing this temporary job? So what, and what it was, effectively, a two-month crash uh, in Steve's flat f when I was doing this temporary job in Harlow, uh, ended up with me being sort of based here on and off really from about 1979 to about 1991. I mean, I say that because I'm, I was charging around all over the place anyway, doing gigs. And then I, I, and my previous partner um, lived in South London, and so I spent a lot of time with her. But my address was Spencer's Croft from 79 to 91. I'm originally from Southwick, Port Town of Shoreham Harbour on the Sussex coast, basically, for those who aren't from where we are, Brighton, really, you know, effectively. Um, so I, I moved back there in 1991, but obviously I've still kept her. Uh, a, a huge contact with Harlow because my best friend Steve Drewitt lives here and uh, you know the music scene is unprecedented really I mean one of the reasons that I stayed here I and mean, I stayed here because the music scene I come from Brighton and the music scene was very very fragmented and it was like the difference between Arsenal and Leighton Orient in football terms so you've got Brighton's like it's got this huge scene spread everywhere but it's already up its own arse by 1979 there were the, the, the punks were turning into mods and there was all kinds of infighting and there was loads of sort of really pretentious stuff going on and I came to Harlow and I, and I met Steve and I saw the neurotics and the sods and uh, Pete and the meat and the boys and the spelling mistakes and all that all those early bands and I just and it was a lovely little contained scene you'll hear a poem I'm gonna do a poem tonight called foyer bar which is about where we used to hang out really before the square got going, you know, in the early 80s. We used to hang out in the foyer bar of Hollow Playhouse. Um, and I've got a little poem about that and about how it was then. Um, and I just, I, you know, I, I felt really at home here. I mean, and a lot of people back then would always say, well, how the hell, did, why did you, you're from Brighton? I mean, Brighton's like a really hip place. How did you end up in Harlow? And I, I just explained, basically, because I really did feel at home here. And one, also, ironically, of course, once I'd got my own place, I could then go back to my mum's in, you know, in, in Brighton uh, on my own terms. And then things got a lot easier then, because I wasn't actually, you know, a kid living, supposed to be living at home with his, with his mother and stepfather. And that thing's, and obviously I was going because I'm Brian of Albion until I die. I was going to watch the football and everything as well. Um, so, you know, but that's how I ended up in Harlow. And my link with the town, 
uh, is something that I've always been very proud of and something that has continued, even though I haven't actually lived here since 1991. Um, you know, I've been back regularly performing and, you know, seeing Steve and meeting all my friends and loads of the people, obviously, who started off in Harlow, I meet gigging all over the place. And the square has been a big part of my life. I mean, remember, I did my first gig at Bush Fair Play Barn on September the 8th, 1980, supporting the defects, the condemned and the unborn dead. Hopefully a couple of them will be along today. Um, and, uh, and my second gig was at Rock Against Thatcher at the Square, and all my early gigs were either at the Square or that place, was it Centre Point in Epping? Um, uh, yeah. Do you, do you keep, I mean, you're very good on dates. Did you keep a diary? And how, how do you remember no. September the 8th, 1980s? Just well, just, it was important I just remember it. I remember it because it was, I mean, I've got my living doing what I love since really the beginning of 1982. Hmm. And, um, and, you know, right from the very first gig, I thought to myself, you know, this actually could work. Because I'd seen, I'd seen The Clash. I always said, I saw The Clash, and, and I thought, right, I'm going to do that. Then I saw John Cooper Clark, and I thought, actually, you know, I could probably do that, actually, as well. Like, and that's what I've done. I mean, I, I've got a band called Barnstormer, but primarily I'm a performance poet who writes songs as well, but primarily spoken word. A couple of questions. Did, did Harlow, has Harlow inspired any of your work? Oh, yes. yes. Well, you're here today. I mean, uh, there's, uh, there's a couple, there's... There's three or four quite serious pieces and one exceedingly silly one. I mean, it is fair to say that in my early days in Harlow, the song that I was, well, the thing, the, the, the piece that I was most well known for, nay notorious for, was a, a, um, a song about a, a dead cat full of maggots um, called the Spencer's Croft Cat, um, which, um, which well, basically, by this time was the neurotics, when Newtown Neurotics were going. I just started as a tour of the stockbroker. We did loads of gigs together. I was sharing the flat with Steve Drew and Spencer's Croft. We came back one night. It was actually Valentine's Day, 1980. 1980, Valentine's Day 1980, we came back and in the, in the road um, there was a cat which had obviously just had a, an unfortunate relationship with a motor vehicle and it was just lying there so we put it in the bushes and we thought Hollow Cats will come and clear it away and they didn't and stayed in the bushes and spring turned to summer and it got all wriggly and I wrote a song about it and, uh, and the song became, became a sort of legendary in the sense that you know um, there was graffiti, you know, bury the Spencer's Croft Cat, it's a dead cat, bury the Spencer's Croft Cat and, and um, we had demonstrations where we, you know, we'd have a uh, sort of anti-fascist demonstration, but the National Front is a Nazi front, and a few of us have started going, the Spencer's Croft Cat is a dead cat, bury the Spencer's Croft Cat. It was really silly, but it's, it was just one of those funny things. Um, but yes, um, the serious ones, uh, Contributory Negligence was written while I was living in Harlow. My, my satire on the judge who said that a woman who was hitchhiking late at night and was raped was asking to be raped because she was a woman, um, and was therefore guilty of contributory negligence. Uh, that one, Airstrip One, it was probably the song that I'm most proud of, really, of all, actually, was, was the link between the port town in Sussex, where I grew up and where I now live, and Harlow, because it, it mentions both in the same song, and Foyer Bar, I wish I could do for you now, if you like. This was about the early days of the Harlow punk scene. Living in a brave new town, things can often get you down. Not much to say, not much to do. Existence gets on top of you. Well, some folks say, well, why not go and meet a girl in a disco? But I don't want to walk that far, so I go to the Foyer Bar. We go there and we sit together, uniform is jeans and leather, and we sit and drink and doze, and we sit and drink and pose. Everything we say is cool, big fish in a little pool. Yeah, if you want to be a star, you'll make it in the foyer bar. <laughs> and that was the difference between Harlow and Brighton, because Brighton, you know, everything was everywhere, right? In Harlow, we all went to the foyer bar. So it was like a big fish in a little pool. It was kind of a, and it was such a, and there was so much creativity here in the, in the, in the late 70s, early 80s. There were so many bands doing really good stuff. And of course there was the Stort Beat record label that Billy Meadows and, um, and uh, Kevin Jones started, uh, which, which put them all, which put the bands out. Uh, you know, like the rivers, the Mersey runs through Liverpool, the river Stort runs through Harlow, so hence Stort Beat. Um, and it was just brilliant. I mean, I, I really, it was a, it was a, it had a huge influence on my early, early kind of, life really as a performer. As we're only two or three days after a general election, and I guess we still feel we are in a general election, don't we? Um, are you, we ever, are you, were you surprised and are you surprised that when you lived here, Harlow, for the great part, had a Conservative MP and, and Harlow's just returned a Conservative MP with a majority of Well, I, can, I tell you, I have got a good memory because I can remember 79 when Stan Ewans mm. uh, lost his seat. And Stan Ewans lost his seat in the most ridiculous three-way split where the Tory, whose name was, was Hayes, Jerry, uh, Jerry Hayes got about 23,000, Stan got 22,000, the Liberal Democrats got 21,000. And I know obviously Bill Rammel got in later on. Um, but I mean, it is, I, I was 
full of hope for this. I mean, I was, you know, in, where we are, I mean, I was campaigning in Ho for, 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 for Peter Kyle, and he turned an 1800 majority into an 18,000 majority. In Kemp Town, which was Tory by 600, we ended up with a 10,000 majority. And in East Worthing, and, um, that, this is the, the art, that's the art, that's, you know, obviously Pavilion is Caroline Lucas, who's just going to get in easily anyway. Um, but that's the, that is the sort of the hub. Um, where we are, it's it's the people that live there, mm. and it's a completely different constituency, literally. Um, and it's been, I mean, the, the, the Spencer Scroft cat could get in with the blue rosette, but even there, Tim Loughton, our local horrible slimy local MP, got they got the same twenty five thousand. But our but our new trans uh, transgender uh, candidate Sophie Cook, uh, the, certainly the first transgender um, photographer for AFC Bourne with and the Libertines to stand in East Worthing and Shoreham for, for the Are Labour sure? Party. Um, <laughs> She, 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 she got the vote up from 9,000 to 20,000, 11,000, swing of 20%, right? I'm, I'm, I was really sad about Harlow. I thought that, you know, it would happen. But everywhere is different. Mm. And, of course, here there is this kind of rather, you know, there are places where the, the sun and the mirror and the sun and the mail have very little traction anymore because we can do everything online. But I can tell in a place like Harlow that there's still quite a lot of that, you know, people still get that, people still believe some of that stuff. It's... It, you know, and it's shocking actually. Mm. When I see the town centre now, as when I first came here, when I see the state of the town centre now compared to when I first came in the, in the mid seventies, you know, it was it was a it was it was a nice place, you know. And the first and came, the state or non state of the square. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this, that is the biggest, most disgusting thing of all. Now, I you know, my thoughts are unprintable about about that. I mean, what Circle Housing have done. I mean, I can't be libelous here, but should we say that Circle Housing? Haven't covered themselves in glory in in terms of the description of many of the projects that they have been involved in, and now the place is just lying there rotting. Mm. You know, at least at least to have the decency to knock it down after everything it's given us over the years. Yeah. That that is just contemptible. So, so, and so the, finally, taking this and the role of Harlow yeah. Council in the whole thing, I think, has also been pretty mm. pathetic, to be honest. I'm aware we haven't got much time, and just taking ourselves up to date. So, what brings you here to Harlow in June 2017? Well, I mean, uh, Adam's running this series of gigs for the Black. Doing this, you know, Adam is deserves huge huge credit for what he's done here for you know first of all for fighting to save the square and now for setting up this place and obviously he's turned Burnt Mill School Hall into a into a gig venue he's an amazing guy I'm totally you know I'm someone like that I get out and I do things I, I run a beer for beer music festival that happened last week um, so I really respect people that do that and he's brilliant right and he asked me to do it you know it's, it's great I just thought and also there's something special coming on today because it's funny because you've asked me this but I'm actually on stage going to talk about how I ended up in Harlow in the sorry uh, how I ended up in Harlow in the first place and um, the, the family who, who, who I came to stay with when I was a little kid um, are all coming in, the, the mum and mum, uh, dad's 89 and mum's 81 and um, you know and it's kind of and, and I'm telling that story about, about all of that because I had a really, I had some real shit going on when I was, when I was young um, and, um, and Harlow actually really helped me I mean, I know that it has a, you know, people say, well, bloody hell, some of them from a place like Brighton, you could end up here. But Harlow actually really did me a lot of good in the early 1980s, I can tell you. I mean, that might sound a weird thing to say, but it really did.